Good morning and welcome to the First Presbyterian Church of Petoskey. I'm Pastor Ryan Donahoe and I'm honored to welcome you here this morning. As we begin each week, we begin with these words. This is a Christian worship service and because it is a Christian worship service, everyone is welcome here and our doors are open to all people. And now let us prepare our hearts and mind for worship. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. In you we come home to rest, to wrestle, to love, to be loved. We dwell in you. The mountains were born before you delivered the whole world. From everlasting past to everlasting future, you are God. In you we are home. We dream, we flourish. We fade, we rejoice, we dwell in you. Please join us in our opening hymn, Our God, Our Help in Ages Past. Short as the watch that ends the 
Let us come together and join our hearts and voices in our call to confession. Your holiness, O God, commands that we confess. We have neither loved our neighbors as ourselves, nor honored ourselves as your beloved creation. We have judged unjustly, regarded others ungenerously, profited at the losses of those near and distant, borne grudges, desired vengeance, and kept silent in the face of wrongdoing. We love to live in accord with your desire, that your way of compassion, kindness, and honesty will govern our hearts and minds, turning us toward lives of peace. Forgive us and lead us. Amen. Beloved ones, believe again the gospel, that in Christ we are accepted as we are. Amen. pray with me. Pour out your Holy Spirit, O God, and prepare our hearts to accept your word. Silence on us any voice but your own, that hearing we may also obey your will, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the laws and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, The son of David. He said to him, How is it then that David by the Spirit calls him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand, till I put your enemies under my, your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare ask him any more questions. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, it is good to see you and be back together with you. I have Moira here helping me out today for our children's time, because what I want to do is I want to talk about all the children here in our church. And so Avery Courier, I hope you're listening. I hope you're here with your parents and you're helping your dad out especially as he's teaching second grade because you know he needs help. So when you're having fun in preschool and Moira is here and Moira and Kellen, I get to see them every day. And are you staying out of trouble? Yeah, right. So most of the time. And Noah and Jacob Dornbost, I hope you're having fun doing your schooling at home, and especially with all the construction going on on your house. And Max and Frankie, I was going to say, I hope you're staying out of trouble, but with Frankie, we know how Frankie is. But Frankie, I know you're having lots of fun with your grandmas and with your parents. And Max, I hope you're having fun in third grade. And Miss Ember and Ada, I hope you're being a good big sister and taking care of your little sister. 
and it's so exciting, and we can't wait till we can see you again, Ember and Ada. And Eli and Ethan and Evan, you guys are at a new school this year, which is very exciting. And I hope you're looking out for Miss Jo there at Lincoln and saying hi to her, but I hope you're doing well. And for Saya, we know you're having fun because you always have fun and always love to run around. And for MJ, you're a big bad fifth grader now, which is very exciting. And I know you are loving having your own room with your older sister off at college. And we did, we found out it wasn't you causing all those messes, it was your older sister. <laughs> Isn't it glad your parents know that now? And to Brody and Blake, Brody, I hope you're being a good big brother and helping out your parents. And we miss seeing all of you in person, but we can't wait till we can get back together again. And every Sunday going forward now, we will have a special time together. But let's pray, okay, Moira? Lord, we thank you for all the children here in our congregation, for all the children in our community and around the world. Lord, help them to teach us. Because indeed, they are our teachers just as we teach them. And help them to know that they are loved, not just by their parents, but by everyone here in this congregation, and most of all, by you, God. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. As we are all aware, things are a little tense in our nation right now. With COVID cases rising, disagreement on how to handle the virus, oh yes, and an election coming up very soon, we're all on edge. It reminds me of when my siblings and I were children and we wanted our mother's attention. We could be screaming at the top of our lungs from our bedrooms, Mom! 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 And she, like many other mothers, could just ignore that. And we would get no response. You can even be standing next to her, shouting Mom at her, and she would still ignore us. But we learned all we had to do was come up and just start poking her, in the arm, and then you had her attention. Though it was not always the type of attention that you wanted. And I feel that's what's happening to all of us right now. It's as if someone is standing next to us just continually poking us and poking us, and we're all trying to keep our emotions in check. Let us pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I don't know about you, but I would guess that I'm not the only one who has found my blood pressure rising over the last few weeks. As I've read news stories, social media accounts, and encountered people around town, I've found that I have become more stressed, more on edge, and yes, more angry. My spiritual director has actually told me I need to take a break from the news because it causes me so much stress. Yes, I am on edge. I am living in a state of constant tension, and I'm sure that many of you would probably say the same thing. As I noted last week, so many people in the church have called me because they're so upset and frustrated with their family members and friends. 
There's such a high level of division within our country. There is such discord and disagreement even on how we keep one another safe. This is similar to this scene in which we find Jesus again being confronted by the religious authorities. This text today comes right after these texts over these last few weeks where the religious authorities keep coming up and pounding Jesus and poking him and poking him. All of this is in one day. They're trying to catch Jesus within a trap. Last week, we heard about the Sadducees and Herodians, and now it's the Pharisees, and these three different Jewish sects could not agree on anything at all. So it's not like they were coming together behind the scenes, knowing they were going to do this, they just all decided on their own that they needed to catch Jesus in a trap. I was trying to think of a similar group of people today, and I figured if you could picture having the Tea Party members the Democratic Socialists of America and the Libertine Party all coming together and choosing the same presidential candidate, that's what it was like to have the Sadducees, Herodians, and Pharisees working together. But these groups are all out for one purpose, to trap Jesus and what he says. They're hoping that he will say something that will so upset the Jewish people, or the best of all words, if he says something seditious about the Roman authorities, and then they can just turn Jesus to them and be done with him. They just keep poking and poking and poking at Jesus, hoping to get a reaction out of him that will cause him trouble. But again and again, Jesus turns the table on them and puts the question back on them. And this time, it's a lawyer. And I'm sure that lawyer thought that he would finally be the one to trap Jesus in his words because we all know that's what lawyers like to do. And I apologize to the lawyers in our congregation, but you know it's true as well. And the lawyer does come up with this great question for Jesus. What is the greatest commandment? You know, he was pretty proud of himself, thinking that he would finally be the one that would confound Jesus. For how could Jesus condense all the laws into one statement? It would be impossible. However, once again, Jesus shows his mastery of the Jewish scriptures and that he won't be trapped by their questions. And he does it in a brilliant way, for he points to the Shema, Judaism's most fundamental, ancient, and most well-known biblical passage that we find in Deuteronomy. Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. But Jesus doesn't stop there. 
He tells them that, yes, this is the greatest commandment. And you know everyone there would have been listening and would have been nodding his head saying, yeah, that's right, he nailed that one. But then Jesus says the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself, which we find in Leviticus. And Jesus says, oh, and by the way, these two commandments speak to all the laws that have been passed down from God and through the prophets. And you know the crowd, those standing in the back would be, oh, snap, Jesus, you got him this time. You just got schooled by Jesus again. And everyone would have been laughing at the Pharisees, and especially this lawyer. It would have been quite the scene to witness. And Jesus doesn't stop there. He's like, oh, and by the way, lawyer, I have a question for you as well. The Messiah. What do you think of him? And whose son is he? And they answer wisely, the son of David. But then Jesus goes on and, oh, but what about your Psalms where David calls the Messiah Lord? How can he be his son. And picture this scene. You would have had two groups of people there, the religious authorities, the Sadducees, Herodians, and Pharisees off on one side, and then the rest of the crowd. And with that, the one group would have walked on home mad and embarrassed while the other side would have been slapping each other and hooting and hollering and that's that's right he showed those holier than thou religious folks how it is and matthew tells us no one asked jesus any more questions after that boom end of story but we know it doesn't end there. So what does this passage have to do with us in our divided time? We could chalk it up to one more time. Jesus gets back at the religious rulers and go on our way. Or we could examine what Jesus said. You see, to sum up our calling as Christians is very easy. It's five words. Love God. Love your neighbors. And yes, while it's easy to say, we know it's not so easy to live out. And I really wish that I had a three-point plan that I could hold up right now that you could just check the boxes off of how to do that. But you know that doesn't work. What I have found and what I have come to believe is that in order to do the second we must first do the first. We must first love God with all our hearts and souls and minds. Because if we do not do that, then we have no hope whatsoever of loving our neighbor. So how do we love God with all our being? And I keep hoping someone has an answer for that. But I've come to realize that that process begins by realizing that 
we are nothing. We have nothing without God. And I think it's easy for us here in 21st century America to lose sight of that because so much we can just go out and do on our own or go out and buy on our own. Which is why I keep returning again and again to Cuba. When I sit with someone who literally owns nothing except the clothes on their backs that they've worn every day for months, when I sit with someone who doesn't know where their next meal will come from or even if they will have a next meal. When I pray with the believers at the Wanabakoa Church and they don't know what tomorrow will bring or if they will be around tomorrow, I am reminded that without God, I am nothing. As the Heidelberg Catechism question one asks, what is your only comfort in life and in death? And the answer is this, that I am not my own, but belong with body and soul in life and in death to my faithful Savior, Jesus Christ. I am not my own. That is where love of God begins. That is where love of neighbor begins. Friends, during this time when up is down and down is up, when hatred seems to be the rule, my prayer is that we will remain firmly grounded in love. Not in our own love, but in the love of God. that love that God has for us, us, which then allows us to love God in return and to love one another. And no, it's not easy. No, it's not what society expects. No, it doesn't make our life here on earth any easier. but it is our calling. And it's what we say each week in our benediction. Do you know what to do? Go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to that which is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint heart. Support the weak. Help, help the suffering. I just blanked on that. Help the suffering. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord. May it be so. Amen and amen. Let us pray. God of love, God of grace and mercy, you have called us to love one another. And we know that's only possible because of your love for us and our love for you. Continue to pour out your love upon us all. In your name we pray. Amen.
we respond to God's word and message today with the song, The Gift of Love. It comes from 1 Corinthians, but of course echoes the message that we've just heard and reflects through so many passages throughout the scriptures. So please join us in singing The Gift of Love. Friends, it is good that we can come together. That we can worship in our own homes and we can pray for one another. And so let us join our hearts and voices now in our prayers. Holy God, you have provided all we have needed. You have walked alongside us as we have journeyed through the wilderness and valley and climbed to the heights of the mountain. We have glimpsed the promised land. Here, but not yet. We lift up those who live in the shadow of disappointment, having seen the promise but not the realization. We lift up those who live in the no longer but not yet, having left an arduous past for a future yet unknown. We lift up those who live with the weight of responsibility, having carried the burden of another person's pain. We lift up those who live in the obscurity of loneliness, having survived a torment that cannot be explained. Lay your holy hands upon us, empowering God, that we may be the church for them, through Christ who sustains us. And God, indeed, we come to you with the prayers of our congregation. We pray for those in need of healing and peace. For Ed and Nick, Sue and Carol, Terry and Jack and Rob, Lee and Bob, Betty and Ian and Jenny. And Lord, we pray for the faith community in our communities in our town. And Lord, we lift up to you today 
the mission and ministry of True North Community Church, Trinity Missionary Church, and Temple B'nai Israel. Lord, we also lift up these members in our congregation that you continue to work in and through their lives for Betty Benson, Kathy and Steve Biggs, the Blanchard family and the Bollinger family. Lord, continue to use them to proclaim your love. Lord, we do pray for our nation in the midst of such division that your peace may be known, that your love may be proclaimed, and yes, that we may remember again to love you and to love our neighbor. Continue to work in and through us, O oh God, to proclaim your love to all people wherever we go. And we thank you for the gift of your Son who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Trusting in God's providence, we share not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well. So let us pray. Holy God, we offer these gifts to you. May your favor be upon them and prosper the labor of our hands, that your glorious power may be manifest to all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. As an offering today, I'm going to sing a song that you all are familiar with, and you're welcome to sing along with me. This is a portion of the service. We often do special music or solo music, but this is also a chance for us to all join our hearts. And I'm going to sing the song with all my heart. I'm going to sing it twice through. With all my heart, I want to love you, Lord, and live my life. Each day to know you more All that is in me Is yours completely I'll serve you only With all my few announcements to draw to your attention. First of all, um, throughout the service, you may have heard banging and noise in the background. That's because the renovations are still continuing, and they are working on the new entrance, and rather than asking them to stop, it's best for them to just keep on working. So if you hear noises, that's what that is. And also, I realize as I concluded my sermon that I missed a phrase in the benediction, which I had written down, 
Thankfully, we have people here to help us who prompted me. If I had not written it down, I would have been fine, I'm sure. But again, this is a reminder, if you would like, Wednesdays at noon, we are recording worship. Um, we our session has had discussions about when it will be safe for us to gather back together. Um, we're waiting for some final renovation work to be done in the sanctuary. Um, so there's still some construction going on in the sanctuary. They have to patch and some electrical work. But once that is all done and it is safe for us to be in here, we will provide information about how we can do that and keep one another safe. Um, as always, after worship, we will gather on Zoom for lift time, which is wonderful. And then also, again, Sunday at noon, we will have a prayer time um, here in the sanctuary, and that also will be on Zoom. So you can stay home and participate in that all together. Uh, but that's another way we are reaching out and connecting with one another. Also, this past week, hopefully you received a letter in the mail about generosity, um, and information is there, and thanks to our amazing generosity team for putting that together. And we've already received some of those estimates of giving back, which is wonderful. But please do get those in before November 15th, as that will help session and planning for next year. And now, let us join our hearts and voices together. it's very easy. Love God, love your neighbors. That's all you have to do. But we know it's not so easy as that. And so that's why each week we remind ourselves I'm going to ask Tisha to put the words on the screen for you this week so that you can say them along with me all together. Because you know what to do. Go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to that which is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all people, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet, sweet communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.